Well, quietly over the last few days, uh, and I've been helping this group out, the group is called the New Federal State of China. They have been walking the halls of Congress, trying to get members of Congress to sign on to a letter uh, to go to the Judiciary Committee and Jim Jordan to urge him to investigate China's ties into the federal government. Uh, it's an investigation that needs to happen, which is why I want many members to sign on to this letter. Uh, Nicole Tsai is a member of the new federal state of China, a group that wants to overturn the Chinese Communist Party and ultimately take over China. Nicole Tsai, welcome to the program. Hi, Grant. Thank you for having me. It's so great to be here. Well, it's so great to talk to you, and I want everyone to know you're an American citizen now, but you weren't always. You escaped China. You were in yep. Tiananmen Square during that protest that we all watched with, with wide eyes open, uh, and yet you come here. Tell me about the new federal state of China and how important this mission is of yours. Absolutely. The new Federal State of China was founded by Mr. Mao Guo and Steve K. Bannon on June 4th, 2020, and with a special mission to take down the Chinese Communist Party. And uh, why June 4th? Because June 4th is the day when we lost thousands of brothers and sisters uh, to the tank, to the brutality of the Chinese Communist Party. So Mr. Mao Guo is considered the enemy number one by the CCP. And he started the Chinese whistleblower movement back in 2017. And since that day, he became the most hated and most attacked Chinese dissident on the U.S. soil. The CCP has bought out many American mainstream media uh, to attack him, to slander him. And the social media has been deep platting for him. And he still didn't have account on Twitter. And even more. The CCP has hired America's most prominent law firms to go after him because these American law firms have been hired by right. CCP to bring more than 70 lawsuits against Mr. Mao School and the Chinese whistleblower movement members. So, uh, Nicole, what it seems to me is they're afraid of what he has to say right? Yeah. Uh, they're afraid of what your group can expose. Now, you've been walking the halls of Congress, going to meet with every member of Congress you can. Mm -hmm. How are those meetings going? Are people inside, these are specifically Republicans, they're more apt to meet with you, I understand that, but I know you're nonpartisan. Uh, how has those meetings been going? Are the members of Congress understanding just how, how strong and serious of a problem this is? It's strong, it's solid, it's unstoppable. And I'm so encouraged by the outpouring support and enthusiasm expressed by our congressional uh, leaders. And they know that CCP is the most dangerous existential threat to America. And they know that uh, we're, we need to save America first because, be, be, before we can talk about the free China, because the CCP is here. The CCP has succeeded in weaponizing America's federal government agencies, including the Department of Justice, the FBI, the SEC, and they have a launch an assault on the U.S. justice system. And their goal is very clear, is to take down America. So before CCP take down America, we need to take down the CCP, and we need congressional leader support on both, from both aisles, because united we stand, we'll have a better chance to take down CCP sooner. Nicole, um, I, I believe that China needs the United States for its economy to run. I mean, look, we have a huge trade deficit with China. China is eating our lunch when it comes to that stuff. We need China as well. Sadly, we need China more than we should need China. We rely on them for a lot of things. War would not be in the best interest of either country. So when you say China wants to destroy America, can they financially afford the destruction of America, what would do that do to China? China needs America as much as America needs China from an economic standpoint. So let me first clarify the difference between China, Chinese people, and the CCP. So Chinese people and China is not represented by the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP has hijacked China and been enslaving the Chinese people for so many years since 1949. So let's be clear, the CCP does not represent the Chinese people. And then when we're talking about the economy, that whole global economy is actually the biggest slavery of the 1.4 billion Chinese people. The CCP has stolen American jobs and put them into China and enslave the Chinese cheap labor. 
and that is the slavery. So that is not economy. That's slavery. And we need to end this slavery by decoupling from the CCP economically, diplomatically, trade, and militarily, everything. We need to cut off the tie with the CCP. And America should establish a normal and diplomatic and economical normal relationship with the Chinese people represented by the new federal state of China, which is now have been fallen by more than 600 million people around the world, well, including those in China. That, that, Nicole, is the key, is to get rid of the Chinese Communist Party and let the people of China finally have their country back. Um, it's so great to have you on this program. How can people help you? I would encourage everybody who's watching this show to call your congressman and ask them to sign on the Dear Colleague letter, which we have submitted to several congressional uh, uh, leaders. That letter is addressed to Jim Jordan, the chairman of the Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. We asked the Congress to start an investigation into CCP's weaponization of the DOJ, uh, SEC, and the FBI, and Southern District of New York, and look into the lawsuit brought. Uh, by the CCP against Mao Skuo, CCP's enemy number one. Mr. Mao Skuo is CCP's most feared enemy, and he's now facing more than 70 lawsuits brought against him by American top law firms hired by the CCP. Yeah. And we need to look into the cases and find out who well, is enabling the CCP inside the DOJ, the FBI, the SEC, and the, the Southern District of New York. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, it goes far beyond just one man. This is about the safety and security of America. It's about the people of China, and it is a very, very important issue. Nicole Tsai, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you putting up a fight with the new federal state of China. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you, America, for supporting our goal to take down the CCP beginning in the United States of America, beginning inside the U.S. federal government agencies. Thank you. Well, that is a goal that Stinchfield's Army can get on board with. I can promise you that. Nicole, thank you.